Thank you for um, coming out tonight for this evening's production of Disorder in the Court. Um, I want to thank you all for being here to support theater at Merrill High School. Um, and more specifically, just thank you for um, coming out to support these 13 high school students that have really worked hard over the last couple months to really develop and create and, and produce uh, what I think you'll find to be a really enjoyable show. Uh, one thing I need to inform you about is that you are not just here tonight as an audience, but you are here to serve as the jury in a criminal trial. Not just any criminal trial, but a murder trial. A triple murder trial. So, uh, we expect that you will work very hard and diligently to um, uh, listen to the case presented to you and to help us serve justice this evening. Um, so, thank you for being here, enjoy the show, thank you. Yeah. Look, I know I'm not supposed to talk to you before the case, but I just need you to listen. I am not a murderer. I was just traveling on my way from New York to Miami when I stopped in this little town, Berserkville. Yeah, Berserkville. Big mistake. Turns out there's a murder on the loose with the same car as me, and now I'm the prime suspect. I I'm so nervous. I haven't even met my lawyer yet. Uh, you're not my lawyer, are you? Uh, uh, Macy? Casey. Hi, I'm Mr. Dill. You okay? So, sorry, it's just, it's just when I get nervous and it's, it's just the new, new case and uh, it's just... You seem pretty day. disorganized. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just when I get, it's just when I, yeah. Look, all I care about is if we're going to win. Oh, right, the case. Yes, I have complete confidence in this case. You have a strong alibi. There's no way we're going to lose, just as long as there's no... Who's um, Mr. Scammerton? Uh, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 this is, this isn't good, this isn't... What? Why? Who is he? Only the best prosecution attorney in the whole state. He's never lost a case. He's really that good? The best. Huh, I mean, I am innocent, right? So it shouldn't be that hard to prove. Well, see, it's not that easy. Uh, Mr. Scarrington doesn't really play by the rules. He's a little, uh... Who's ready to win a case today? Because I had a bowl of victory oats for breakfast this morning with a tall glass of self-esteem. And I'm ready to fight. It's the eye of the tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. And you are? Me? I'm a winner. I am an unstoppable force. I am... Mr. Scammerson? In the flesh. And I take it you're the defendant? Yeah, well, I just wanted to tell you that Psych. I... <laughs> Here's a little tip for you, kid. Trust no one. Not even my lawyer? <laughs> you really want to trust that? Well, hey, I may not be the... <laughs> Look, I just wanted to tell you that I really am innocent. They grabbed the wrong person, and I... Yeah, just... you know, that all sounds like a personal problem to me. Look, I don't care whether you're innocent or guilty. All I care about is winning. I've never lost a case before, and I don't plan on starting today. You would really send an innocent person to prison just for the sake of winning? Uh, yeah. How could you? You're supposed to care about liberty and yeah, justice. liberty, justice, honor. That's all great now, but you better get ready. Because by the looks of your team, you're going to need it. All rise for the Honorable Judge Falter. Thank you. You may now be seated. <clears throat> Court is in session. Case number 19-1465. The People of Berserkville versus Case Illicit for the murder of Greta Feta, Pepper Jackson, and Bree Cottage is now in session. Prosecution, are you ready? <laughs> Board ready, Your Honor. And is the defense ready? 
I guess, Your Honor. All right, then. Mr. Scamerton, your opening statement for us, please. But of course. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what I want you to do now is close your eyes with me and imagine. Now I want you to picture a murderer. Picture a girl, five foot three, maybe five foot four, depending on the shoes she's wearing. Long hair, dark and straight, glasses, and wearing a light blue blouse with a black skirt. Now open your eyes. And doesn't that image look suspiciously like this woman right here? Objection, Your Honor. He's literally just describing my appearance. Overruled. Continue, Scamerton. I'd like to be known as a fair lawyer, a just lawyer. I don't want to show bias towards the things that divide us as people. Things like gender. Gender is often used to discriminate in the workplace, but not by me. I want equality across the board. Anyway, I trust that you, the jury, will make the right choice and provide the right conclusion. You all seem like an intelligent bunch, very knowledgeable. You might say, in fact, that you're all a bunch of smarties. Why don't you all have some, courtesy of me, the prosecution? Here we go, let's just have it. Objection, Your Honor! He's literally driving the jury with candy! Wait, hold on. Uh, can I have one? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. This is insane! He's going to win because you let him do whatever he wants. Silence! Continue, Mr. Scamerton. I'm inspired by great leaders. Abraham Lincoln. Martin Luther King Jr. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. All outstanding people who will be remembered throughout history. People who have touched America. I too like to think I touch America one case at a time. By giving sickos like her off the streets and behind bars. Does this make me a good person? A saint? The answer is yes. Yes, it does. But I still remain humble. In fact, humble is my middle name. Actually, it's Cedric, but that's beside the point. I'm so humble that if they held the humble awards, I would totally win. It'd be this huge affair, but I would blow it off like it's nothing, because that's just the kind of guy I am. The point is, I'm the good guy here. And they, they are the ones corrupting society. A vote for a guilty Casey is a vote for a safer world. <clears throat> Thank you. Try to beat that, Flops. Well then, Mr. Flops, would you care to deliver your opening statement for us, please? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, so the reason that my client Tracy is... Casey! Right, 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 Casey is, is guilty is that, is that she's... I'm not, not guilty! I, I'm not guilty! I, I, can I start over? Yeah, no. Okay. That's okay. We can handle this. You got this, Gregory. Despite what Mother says, you can be a winner. You will not be a disappointment. Not this time. So the reason that my client, Casey, is innocent is, well, it's as simple as that. She's innocent. She was nowhere near the scene of any of the crimes when they happened. I mean, except for the third one. And I guess if you think about it, she technically could have, like, driven down and made it back for the other two. No! What are you doing? You're supposed to be defending me, not helping the prosecution. Yeah, I don't need your help, but if you want to run your case straight to the ground all by yourself, you can totally do that, too. <laughs> okay, look, I know I'm no Mr. Scamerton, all right? I know I may not be as put together as he is. I know I may not have the charm or the talent or a law degree. Wait, what? But I know one thing, and that, uh, that, that, that thing is, wait, uh, no, that's not it, uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I can't figure out what it was, but it was a real competitive edge, I'll tell you that. Thanks. Huh. Well then, hmm. Mr. Scamerton, would you like to call forward your first witness to the stand? Why, yes, I would, Your Honor. The first witness the prosecution would like to call is Casey Lissett. Wait, me? Can he call me up? I'll allow it. Come on, Casey. Step right up. Oh no, I know my rights. I do not have to testify against myself. <coughs> party pooper. What did you just call me? Uh, I, I believe he referred to you as a party pooper, you know, one who... I, I am not a party pooper. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Look out, guys. We got a real Debbie Downer on our hands. I am not a Debbie Downer. Well, then you wouldn't mind answering a few questions for me. After all, if you're really as innocent as you say you are, this shouldn't be a problem, should it? Fine. Please, stand before the bailiff. Place your hand in the book. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Take your seat. <clears throat> now, most murderers wouldn't just fess up to their crime. I am not a murderer. But I am an expert. I've spent years in law school and have been practicing for a good amount of time now. I'm a seasoned veteran. And over the years, I've learned the skills, these sophisticated tactics it takes to get through to a criminal. Mm, guilty person says what? What? <gasps> That's all we need. No further questions for the witness, Your Honor. Well then, with such damning evidence, Mr. Floss, would you care to redirect? Uh, I, I don't know if I can. Just come question me. I, I don't have a paper for this. Just ask me some questions. Uh, okay. Um, so, so what's your favorite color? Questions about the murders, Mr. Flops? Right, right, murders. So, um, why'd you do it? I didn't. You're my lawyer. You should know that. Right? So why didn't you do it? Because I'm not even from here. I was just traveling on my way, and I got stopped and arrested. There's no evidence that I'm a murderer, except that I drive the same kind of car as the murderer, apparently. But anyone could have that kind of car. I'm not from here. I don't know who these people are. Why would I want to kill them? Uh, objection. I want that stricken from the record. On what grounds? Honestly, those are just very good points, and they don't really help my case at all, so I want to stick Okay. What? Oh, I mean, you've got to admire his honesty. But you don't have to just let him do it. Silence, or I'll hold you in contempt of court. Continue. Flops? Um, uh, so you have, like, no reason to kill any of these people? No, like I said, I have no reason that I'm going mm -hmm. to... Mm -hmm. I have no reason to tell uh, uh, I have no reason to uh, I have... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Scammerton. Am I boring you? Oh, don't you mind me. I'm just patiently waiting for my turn to redirect. So, I would never even... You know what? I think we're done here. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, then. Mr. Scammerton, would you care to question? Well, I mean, if they're already done, I guess I could. Miss Lizzie, couldn't you should have or would have, couldn't have, couldn't have, shouldn't have, not even wouldn't have, been the murderer? I don't understand the question. It's a simple yes or no question, Miss Lizzie. I don't want to accidentally admit to being a murderer. Hmm. You know who else would be afraid of admitting to being a murderer? Who? A murderer. Do you have any real questions for me? No. I'm known as a pretty reasonable guy. I thought you were asking I'm questions. getting there. I'm getting there. Look, I'm not known to exaggerate or blow things out of proportion. But this person has to be the most atrocious, despicable person ever to walk the face of the earth, ever. And yes, I'm counting people who poured their milk into the bowl before their cereal. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I say no hyperbole when I say that she is that bad. I am not. God, how am I to possibly try and reason with someone so offensive, so deranged? How am I to possibly I'm not crazy. I someone. I am not. Someone who doesn't know how to sit and listen instead of jerking me all the time. So, uh, I have no further questions for Casey Lissick, and it's not because when I was feeding the ducks in the park this morning, I accidentally fed them as part of my notes. Why would you Because yeah. Casey Lissick is simply too unstable to answer anything truthfully. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. All right, then. Flops, would you care to use the question further? Uh, uh, no, Your Honor. Then you may step down from the stand, Miss Lissick. Mr. Flops, why didn't you write read a rent? They could have heard my side of the story. Well, I, I didn't have anything written down either, but I just didn't have as good of an excuse as Mr. Scammerton had. Mr. Scammerton, 
Would you care to call forward your next witness? But of course, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to call in Ms. Penny Patson to the stand. Huh. All right, Penny, this is your time. <laughs> uh, please stand before the bailiff. Uh, place your hand on the book. State your name for the court. Penny Batson. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Absolutely. You may be seated. <clears throat> Would you be so kind as to restate your name for this courtroom, please? Penny Batson. And what is your occupation, Miss Batson? I'm a blogger. Hmm. And what do you blog about? I blog about blogging and other blogs. I see. And what is your relationship to the victim? I knew Brie Cottage from blogging, but when three whole days went by and she had posted anything at all, I knew something was up. So what did you do? I went to her favorite place of looking for her, of course. I went to the coffee shop because it's hashtag delish, and the river wash because it's aesthetics. But I ended up finding her in the park. And how was she when you found her? She was tote dead. <gasps> how did she die? It looked like she was strangled to death. Strangled to death, you say? May the jury note that the defendant, Casey Lissett, has two hands. Perfect for strangling. That's ridiculous. Everyone has two hands. May the jury also note that Casey Lissett discriminates against amputees in those born without arms. <laughs> now, Miss Madison, how did this death affect you? It was hashtag tragic. Great for blogging, though. Know, I got a lot of hits from that. Actually, can you stand so for a sec so I can oh, get a picture? I pride myself with being very photogenic. Perfect. They will love this on the internet. Yes. Now what I have here is some hardcore photo proof from the scene of the crime. Now I warn you, there is a little blood and gore, so if you're a tad bit squeamish, you may want to look away. Behold! <laughs> photo proof! These are crayon drawings! Okay, okay, you got me. But believe it or not, these are our actual pictures I drew from the scene of the crime. Oh, wow. Really? But, but it's so realistic. You had me fooled. What are you talking about? It's clear to me. Oh, Yes, we know that, Casey. But we do have to focus on the case. Now, Miss Hanson, does this picture accurately represent what you saw when you first found the body? It does. Isn't it great? I think I did an especially good job with the shading and with the color. I really like that. I thought we were focusing on the case, Mr. Scammerton. Fine. And this next one is a close-up of the neck. And once again, I warn you, there is some more blood and gore, so you may want to look away. Behold! Oh, oh, wow, that, that might be far too graphic for the court. It's too much like the real thing. Like, I can't even. I think I might faint. What are you talking about? It's just some squiggly lines and red scribbles. What are you talking about, Casey? This is true art. Who signed you on anyway? Yours? Come on, the things are labeled so we know what they are. Otherwise, it'd be wavy lines and red scribbles. I mean, you guys cannot be buying this, can you? I mean, whoa, whoa, it's... hey, hold on there a minute. The jury is a noble, sensible. They are intelligent and strong-willed. Not to mention a great-looking group of people, if I do say so myself. The jury knows the difference between what is right and wrong, between what is legitimate evidence and what is not. So when approached with pictures such as, of course they would Don't take, take it, it seriously. Wait, did you say they don't take this seriously? How could they not? I mean, how could they? Well, if you hadn't been convinced before, this will show you for Charlotte. <laughs> oh, actually, it's a field of turkeys I drew the other day. <laughs> oh, those are some lovely turkeys. They're very well drawn. Yes, yes. You see, I wanted to do this series of drawings of groups of animals. I call it Beasts Running Wild. I started with a turkey one, and it turned out great. I went with the uh, court case and everything. It's all I really had time to do. You know, I actually wanted to be an artist when I was a young lad, but father said no. There's no future for artists in this economy, he said. A lawyer will make much better money, he said. You need to think practical, he said. Well, what if I don't want to think practical? What if I just want to follow my dreams? Some of us still have dreams, Dad! <laughs> uh, uh, no further. Questions for the witness, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right. After uh, that, Mr. Flops, would you care to say something? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, Your Honor. Uh, so, Miss Batson, did you see who 
strangled your friend? No, I actually didn't. So you have no way of knowing if it was if it was Casey, correct? No, but I'm just getting this vibe that it was her. Fair enough. What? That's not fair enough. This is a court case. We need to go off cold, hard facts, not lies. I'm getting a vibe you woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning, didn't you? <laughs> it's like all in your aura. I can see it from here. Let's look at the facts. You didn't see me. You can't prove it was me. Yeah, but it's in your eye. I mean, she can quite clearly see it. It's quite obvious. <laughs> and as we all know, you can't fake an aura. Mm -hmm. It's got a point. No further questions, Your Honor. Well then, Mr. Scavenger, would you care to ask any further questions? Uh, no, I'm good, Your Honor. Then you may step down from the stand, Miss Fasson. Thanks for this opportunity. You tag me in that one. You got it. Yes. Well then, Mr. Scamerton, your next witness for us, please. But of course, the prosecution would like to call a Mr. Glenn Chatter to the stand. Hmm. <laughs> Please, stand before the bailiff, good sir. Uh, place your hand on the book. Take your name to the court. Glenn Chatter. <laughs> do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You may be seated. Could you please state your name and occupation for this courtroom, please? Glenn Chatter. I am the town gossip. Wait, your occupation is the town gossip? I am the ears of this town. Nothing happens without me hearing about it. Hmm. So what's the news? Want to know the lowdown? Word on the street? Yeah. What's the word? I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy's podiatrist, and this is what I heard. You go to the lower eastern west side of town and enter in the third alley. Not the one with the dog who knows how to play the harmonica, but the next one, and enter in the back of the building that has no windows. That kind of reminds me of a low-budget horror movie. On the inside, there will be a one-eyed, three-armed man named Ambiguous Pete. He's going to give you a very indifferent answer on whether you can end or not. Enter anyways. And if old Pete comes running after you, ask him about his childhood. Then all of a sudden, I'm running for the hills. Because confrontation is his biggest fear right after snakes and losing a game of Monopoly. Once you're in, there's a woman with bright blue eyebrows, but not above her eyes, sitting in the corner. Tell her the geese fly south in the winter, and it's time for them to come home. And that's how you can get your Hannah Montana CDs. Oh. What? This is about Hannah Montana CDs? This idiot relevant to the case. Whoa, 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 hold on there just a minute. Hannah Montana is always relevant. It's such a classic show that will never go out of style. She teaches us about love, friendship. You, you get, get the best of both worlds. Chill it out, take it slow. Wait, are you singing now? Walk out the show. <laughs> Anna Montana, 2006 to 2011. May she rest in peace. What is going on here? Have some respect. You really do belong in prison if you have no respect for Hannah. Can we please just get back to the case? Well, if you want to brush the important things and that side, fine. I guess we can ask more questions. But what else do you know, Mr. Chatter? I heard from my brother, who heard from his barber, who heard from his bar mitzvah coordinator. This is what I know. Far, far away from here, like two miles, there's a homeless Joe who lives under a bridge. He's gonna ask you a riddle, try to answer correctly, but if not, homeless Joe is a huge pushover and I'll let you cross anyway. Then you go over the river and through the woods until you see a blue chicken. The murders! What do you know about the murders? I'm getting there. <laughs> Were you really? No, not really. There were three murders, Mr. Chatter. Pepper Jackson, Green Cottage, Greta, Freda. Do you know anything about these murders? Murder? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, murder! That guy's in a stampede, right? Uh, Looks like an accident. The son thinks it's all his fault, but really it's the dad's brother's fault. He framed the whole thing so he could get the family power. So then the son runs off and becomes friends with a warthog and a meerkat. That's the plot of the Lion King! Well, get this. There's a mom, a dad, and a bunch of kids. And one night, the mom and most of the kids die, leaving the dad with one son, who has a physical disability because the father was always overprotective. And, and one day, the son gets lost, having the dad on this wild journey, joined with a woman with short-term memory loss. Finding Nemo! That's Finding Nemo! Get this, there's his pig, right? 
And it gets put on a farm out. because his owners can't take care of him anymore. And then this spider That's the plot of Charlotte's Web. Wait, no one's even murdered in that movie. Charlotte just died. Hey, spoiler alert, come on! I was gonna watch that! <laughs> now, Mr. Chatter, it doesn't seem like you know any vital information for this case. Well, sometimes I, I just know. <sighs> No further questions, Your Honor. Uh, Flops, you want to ask this guy something? Yes, yes, I do, Your Honor. Now, I believe that this man does have vital information. Now, now, Mr. Chatter, how does Finding Nemo end? Mr. Flops! What? I've never seen it before, and I'm curious. So can I get, like, Google? We're finished, Your Honor. <sighs> well then, you are... Dismissed. <sighs> Mr. Stammerton, do you perhaps have a, another witness for us? Someone less like that? <clears throat> uh, but of course, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to call a Clarissa Vendor to the stand. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, stand before the bailiff, please. Uh, place your hand on the book. <coughs> do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Sit. <coughs> Could you please state your name for this courtroom, please? Clarissa Bender. And what is your occupation? I own a business. Don't have a cow. Cow removal service. Cow removal service? <coughs> That's right. You got the calf. We got the moving south. That's 1-800-555-6433. And, uh, what is your relationship to the victim? Oh, well, Pepper Jackson was the neighbor across the hall in our apartment building. And a supporter of my business. Don't have a cow? Cow removal service. You've got a cow? We can take it now. That's 1-800-555-6433. And, uh, what do you know about the night of the murder? Well, you know, the night of the murder, I'm sitting in my apartment. Thinking about my business. Don't have a cow. Cow removal service. You've got a steer? Let us take it from here. That's 1-800-555-6433. Actually, I've got some business cards. Business cards? No need to fight. Everyone gets one. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Miss Bender, I need you on the witness stand, please. Fine. Sit back there where you belong. Would you be so kind to tell us about the night of the murder? Well, the night of the murder, I was sitting in my apartment, you know, thinking some more about my business. Don't have a cow, cow removal service. You've got the beef, we got the movers. You need that. That's what it is. Miss Vendor! There'll be no more advertising of businesses from here on out. Then what's the point of being a witness? What's the point? Tell us what that one behind bars. I am not a witness. Would you be so kind as to tell us about the night of the murder? Well, the night of the murder, I was sent in my apartment. Was your door open? Yes, both doors were wide open. Could you hear anything? No, but then I went over to her apartment, you know, and then I found her sitting in a chair. I shook her, thinking she was unconscious, and then there were some stab wounds. So to recap what you just said, you were both in your apartments, but both doors were open. You hadn't crossed paths that day, and you didn't hear anything. So immediately after the murder, you crossed over to her apartment and found the body sitting in a chair. You shook the body, and there! You saw the statue. No, no, no. Look, we were both in her apartment, and yes, both doors were open. I'd seen Pepper Jackson earlier that day, you know, just not prior to the murder. Then I heard something. So I crossed over to her apartment, and I found her sitting in a chair. I shook her, and bam, there was a set of wounds. Wait, hold on a moment. Wait, so you're telling me. Look, look, it's all super simple. We were both in our apartments, both doors were open. And your paths crossed earlier that day, but not close to the time of the murder. Yeah, and then I heard something. So I crossed over to her apartment, you know, then I found her sitting in a chair, and I shook her, and bam, there was a set of wounds again. Makes sense. How is this court even real? I think we all have a great understanding of what transpired that night. 
Thank you, Ms. Bender. No further questions. Well then, Gregory, would you care to question the witness? Uh, uh, sure, Your Honor. So, Ms. Bender, did you see the murder? No, I was too busy, you know, thinking about my business. Right, the business. So, um, so you don't know if it was Casey, correct? I mean, uh... Well, then there you have it. No further questions, Your Honor. That was quick. Scavenger, any questions? Why, yes, Your Honor. Now, Miss Bender, you have not seen the murder, which means it could be anyone in the world, correct? Yeah. So because of the wide possibilities, we cannot rule out Casey Listen, as a suspect, correct? I mean, it makes sense. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, then. Defense, anything else from you? No, Your Honor. And you may step down from the stand, Ms. Bender. This is insane! None of these witnesses are legitimate. They either didn't see the crime or just totally incompetent. None of these witnesses should be taken seriously. Well then, if you believe that to be the case, Mr. Scammerton, do you have another witness? Perhaps someone far more competent? Well, yes, I do, Your Honor. Oh. And yes, he is far more competent. The prosecution would like to call a Professor Huffle to the stand. A professor, huh? Well, I mean, that does seem rather professional. I trust the word of the... Why is Professor Puffle holding a chihuahua? <laughs> that chihuahua is Professor Puffle. What? <laughs> <laughs> professor Puffle was present on the night Pepper Jackson was murdered. She saw the whole thing. <laughs> Who else would be a better witness? Oh, I don't know. A human being? Would you hush up? My turn to question. He's standing for the bed of you, a tall creature. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? She does! <laughs> now, Professor, you were a witness to the murder of Pepper Jackson, correct? It's not going to answer you. Give her some time, please. This was her owner, her very best friend, that she witnessed be killed! This is a very emotional time for her, and I would appreciate it if you would give her some space. You can't honestly expect it to talk, can you? It's just a chihuahua. It doesn't matter. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what I want you to do now is look hard at this poor creature. This poor orphan creature. She no longer has a place to call home. Her owner, nay, her mother, tragically killed, and her mother lies to witness the whole thing. Who could murder someone is one question, but who, who could murder someone and found this adorable and defenseless little animal? We've seen Casey Lizard's intolerance of this adorable, beautiful creature. Doesn't matter, she says, just as it wouldn't matter if she's murdering her own grandfather. I'm not sure how she sleeps at night, knowing this poor being will permanently live with the trauma. No further questions for the witness, Your Honor. <laughs> The defense section. <laughs> I guess, Your Honor. So, for Professor Puffle, it wasn't that traumatizing to watch Casey murder your owner, was it? No! I didn't kill anyone! Right, right. I'm your lawyer, I you know that. So, uh, so Chihuahuas don't have very good eyesight, right? Was it, is it possible that maybe you saw someone else? Should I take that as a yes? Uh, Mr. Puffs. You should definitely take that as a no. Oh, all right. No, you shouldn't just let him tell me whatever to do. But I don't speak Chihuahua. <laughs> well then, Scarlett, any questions for the adorable witness? Just one question, Your Honor. Oh. Professor Puffle, I know we've had our problems communicating here. I'll say. I just want to ask you a question in the simplest form I can. Twitch your nose if Casey Lissick is the murderer. <gasps> Did you see that? A oh, witness identification! A solid case. We might as well lock her up right now. <laughs> what? You can't possibly think of that. Silence! <laughs> Anything else, defense? Uh, no, Your Honor. Then you may step down from the stand. Go. Be free. Bye, Professor Bubbles. You know, ladies and gentlemen, 
With all the sadness and talk of death in this courtroom, I think this might be a good time for a music break. Music break? That's right. This one's a classic. <clears throat> There was a girl who was guilty, and Casey was her name. Oh, C A S C Y, C A S C Y, C A S C Y, and Casey was her name. Oh, come on, you all know the word, join in! There was a girl who was guilty, and Casey was her name. Oh, C A S C Y, C A S C Y, C A S C Y, and Casey. What are you doing? You're supposed to be on my side. Well, it's just such a catchy song. It's so good. That's it. You're fired. Fired? That's right. I don't need someone who can't remember whose side they're on. Well, well then, good luck against him. You're gonna need it. Shut up, Cedric. Hey, as soon as we're more than your life. <laughs> Come on, wonder this is uh, crazy. So, you fired your lawyer. That's a pretty bold move. Well, it wasn't any help. You know, Casey, you caught me in a good mood, and since I'm so far ahead, I think I'll give you a few pointers. Really? Yeah. Now, these are the most important things when it comes to law. Rule one, they can never see you cry. Rule two, show no mercy. Rule three is, have fun and be yourself. <laughs> I honestly don't know what else I was expecting. Oh, well. Scanton, would you like to call forward your next witness? Why, yes, I would. And in fact, I have two witnesses to call up. Really? The prosecution would like to call Albert and Arminta, contrary to the stand. Is that about boys? Not at all. Stand before the bailiff. Place your hand on the book. Uh, do you two swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? We do, I guess. Uh, take your seats, boys. Gentlemen, you were witnesses to the murder of Greta Petta, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Could you please recount to us the events of that night? Well, we, we were driving down Main Street, listening to the radio and jamming out, when suddenly I see something on the side of the road. At first, I just think it's an animal, you know, some old roadkill. But then I look closer, and then I see clothing, and I think, who would throw a nice jacket on the side of the road, right? So, we get out of the car, and we look closer, and it's a dead body. How freaky is that? Albert, is that what happened? No! What? No, it's not. Well then, would you care to tell us what did happen then? Not that. Not that. That's what happened, remember? We were driving down the road and we were like super shocked. We were like, OMG, like a real dead body right here on the side of the road? And we called the police. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. We saw the body and we called the police. We did not call the police. Yes, we did. Did not. Did too. Did not. Did too. Hey, oh, look, are you two going to agree on one final story? No. Yes. Having you two witness at the same time isn't going to be a problem, is it? Yes. No. Tyler, I'm going to get straight to the chase here. Did you see anything to lead you to believe that Casey was the murderer? I oh. mean, it looked like the body was shot. Ah. Body was shot, you say? <laughs> Miss Listen, do you want a gun? You can't ask me anything. I'm not on the witness stand. May the jury know that the defendant refuses to confirm or deny owning a gun. But if you ask me, I feel like she's hiding something. No further questions for the witnesses, Your Honor. That's it? That's your whole questioning? The fact that I may or may not, which I don't, by the way. Oh, Nibba, how could you just think well, of that? I mean, this is ludicrous. How does this even happen? That is it. You've lost your chance to cross-examine. Order in the court. That's the problem. There is no order in this court. You can do anything, and it's... You can do anything. There is no order in this court. Take I your seat. Anything. Your tour to dismiss. <sighs> Stop it. <laughs> Scammerton, your next witness? <clears throat> but of course, the prosecution would like to call a Sergeant Archie Maniacal to the stand. Take your time, Sergeant. Lively now. Please stand before the bailiff. Uh, do you swear?
swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Uh, take your seat, Dixon. Like... <clears throat> Would you be so kind as to restate your name to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Give me a moment, please. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> Could you please state your name for this courtroom, please? Archie Manalco, former sergeant of the Battle of Maple Hill. I see. And what is your relationship to the victim? Greta Feder was best friend to my granddaughter. I have knew her for a long time, but I also have seen things from the battle. Do you want to hear all the things I have seen? <laughs> Not really. Well, I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> so pay attention. You might learn something today. <laughs> it was a cold night in the bunkers. Me and my fellow soldiers were all huddled around the fire, trying to keep warm. Our fingers and our toes were all starting to freeze off. Let me tell you, it got a lot worse to come to ten after that. The food was rushing. The snow was piling two, three feet high. We would want to go home. But we couldn't let them win. Do you know who the enemy was? No, but I bet you're going to tell us anyway. It was those Canadians! <laughs> well, not really the Canadians, but what belonged to them? And what belonged to them, Sergeant? It was a Canadian bacon! <laughs> Canadian bacon isn't really bacon, it's just ham! We couldn't let them keep getting away with these eyes any longer. The general said to attack, but although. I don't think we would be ready for what came next. And what came next, Sergeant? The Canadians were everywhere, riding their moose, swinging their hockey sticks. <laughs> Good day, dear man. They were so polite, but you could tell they meant business. Moose to the left, moose to the right. We were cornered, completely out of options, but that wasn't even the worst part. Oh, dearest me, Sergeant, please. Don't tell us the worst part. The worst part was the maple syrup cannon. <laughs> the sugary, sticky goodness hitting right in our heart. Technically, there was no physical damage, but the emotional damage weighed me down constantly. <laughs> to this day, my pancakes, my waffles are all dry because I cannot taste the sweet syrup. Well, this has been a... Great story, Sergeant. Now why don't we get you back to your best? I let them all down. I let everybody down in my platoon. And also I let down the dignity of bacon. Forgive me, bacon. Forgive me, bacon! You know what? Forget it. I'm done. I don't have anything else with this maniac. Alright. Uh, well, uh... Miss Listen, would you care to, uh... Question this fellow. I would, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Maniacal, you've seen a lot of things in your life, haven't you? Oh, have I ever? I can still hear the cries of my platoon. It's just ham. It's just ham. <laughs> so, you would be able to judge someone's character fairly well, would you not? I met so many good people. I have met the good from the bad, and the good from. Do I seem like a murderer to you? No, you seem like a perfectly lovely girl. Wouldn't even hurt a fly. I definitely would trust in my platoon. You've heard it here, folks. Perfectly lovely girl. Wouldn't hurt a fly. No further questions, Your Honor. What? You can't do that. There was no evidence. You can't make claims based off of loosely based statements. You've been doing that this whole time. Well, yeah, but that's my thing. You can't be doing it too. Well, I'm playing by new rules now. You may step down from the stand. Oh, my knees. <laughs> you might want to see someone about that. Whatever. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Scammerton, do you have any more witnesses? <clears throat> yes, I do, Your Honor. Uh, the prosecution would like to call a virtual of hush to the stand. Uh, come on now. Uh, uh, the young Mr. Hush, come along. Stand before the bailiff. Uh, place your hand in the book. Uh, state 
Anybody in the court? So much. Huh? So much. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, <clears throat> sit, please. <clears throat> now, Mr. Hush, you were a witness to the murder of Greta Petta, correct? Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, could you please recount to us the events of that night? <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, sir, I'm going to need you to speak up just a little bit more. Right? Well, we'll see, now you just got talking. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to need you to speak uh, a little bit louder and try to be a little more clear, sir. Louder and clearer, sir. Louder and clearer, sir. I need you to speak up. You know what? Forget it. If it ain't going to testify like that, I got nothing. Nothing. Okay, uh, uh, Ms. Lissett, would you like to uh, question Mr. Hush, perhaps? I would, Your Honor. Right. Now, unlike the prosecution here, I have very good hearing, and I'm able to hear what the witness is saying. I will articulate it for you. Now, what happened that night? I see. So you're saying I'm not the murderer? Well, that's not what he's saying. That I was nowhere near the scene of the crime? You're making all this up. That I am totally and completely innocent? No, I don't know about that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. See, see, he said he doesn't know if you're innocent. That's not the way I heard it. He literally just said he doesn't know if you're innocent. I, uh, Mr. Hush, say it again. <laughs> now we decide to start speaking quiet again. And now we'll never know. No further questions, Your Honor. Anything? If he's going to testify like that, I guess not. Uh, and you're dismissed. Mr. Skamerton, do you have any more witnesses? Uh, yes, I do, Your Honor. Uh, the prosecution would like to call a Eula Young to the stand. Please stand before the better young man. Uh, put your hand in the book. Take your name to the court. Viola Young. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Sure. <laughs> Take your seat. Hey, okay, wait a minute. Cross all that here, since you said, hey, this is a child. But when I got the witnesses, I, had a, I didn't know this. I, I didn't know I'd be speaking to a child. I don't know how to talk to kids these days. I, I don't know what's cool or what's hip. It's <laughs> like uh, sports? No, no, that's not right. Uh, video games? No, but I don't understand those. The 1793 beheading of Mary Antoinette? That's not right either. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, it's like, uh, ooh, uh -huh, uh -huh, oh, ah, ah, oh, yes, ah, uh, yes. This one's always a killer. <clears throat> Well, my lair, Beulah, my name is Bago, your favorite puppy friend. Today, we're going to talk about murder. Uh, Papa? That's right. Have you seen a murder? How old do you think I am? I don't know. Five, thirteen, twenty-five. Anything in the thirties is the same for me. Well, I'm a little too old for Papa. So then, where do you get my toys? Sports? Sustainable farming? Uh, oh, I know. Yes. Oh, this one always gets them. Uh, let's see. Here. Here, 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 here. here we go. Yes, here we go. Jubilee! Everybody loves some good old fashioned jubilee, am I right? You could just ask some simple questions. Uh, but, but see, I am a jubilee master, you see. He used to call me Jebos McGee in high school. It was my second passion, right after art. I was going to be a jerkwood on the side of this being an artist. But we all know how that was turned out now, don't we? Anyway, here I am, Jebos McGee, back at it again. But if you have anything to do with my skill, like, uh, here we, uh, oh, okay, well, it, uh, seems I may a bit rusty, but still very entertaining, was it not? Not really. Maybe it's just no getting through to you today, you corrupt generation. 
No, the, the question is, what do you witness, Your Honor? I'm... Okay. <laughs> Ms. Sosick, would you care to redirect? I would, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Young, what do you remember from the night of the murder of Greta Not a lot. Maybe this will help your memory? Hey, you can't take that at my baby! Let the jury know that the prosecution is against sharing, not sharing with them the quality that a liar would have. Someone who would lie about someone else being a murderer? So what do you remember? Well, I saw the person who shot her, but I really couldn't make out their face. But for another piece of candy, I can confirm it wasn't you. You got it! <laughs> hey! <laughs> yes, now I can definitely confirm that it was not you who shot Greta Feta. See, completely confirmed that I did not shoot Greta Feta. Who needs more proof than that? No further questions, Your Honor. All right, uh, Ms. Carrington, anything else for the witness? Did you tell me you were motivated by candy? I guess you just knew what kids were into these days. What? <laughs> no further questions for the witness, Your Honor. That's what you get, don't you? You put your heart and soul out there and you just tear it apart, don't they? Don't they? <laughs> Show for you. Uh, any, any, anything else, defense? Uh, get out of here. <sighs> Skeleton? Anyone else? <clears throat> the uh, prosecution rests. Oh, thank the heavens. <sighs> well then, Miss Lizard, does the defense have any witnesses they would like to go over? Um, witnesses? I have to have something. I, I have to. You have no witnesses? Ha! <laughs> you have nothing. And there's no way you're going to win this now. Face it, you're through. We might as well get ready to go home now. What's that all over your coat? Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely not the blood from Greta Feather Pepper Jackson and Free Cotton from the Brewers. That's for sure. Oh, okay. Well, as long as it's not the blood from that. The defense calls the bailiff the stand. Me? But I don't know anything. Like, I have no idea how. It Pepper Jackson got stabbed seven times at 6.48 p.m. on the 23rd. Um, we never said how many times she was stabbed. Or at what time. I'm a really good guesser. You see, this man is clearly just a good guesser about the murder details of the bloodstained jacket. There's nothing suspicious about it. I want him on the stand. Uh, well then, you, you best get up there as far as yourself in. Uh, stand before yourself. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I guess? Please state your name for the court. Joseph Slayer. And your occupation is a bailiff? Yes, but I also want a restaurant. Sloppy Joe's. And Mr. Slayer, what type of car do you drive? A white pickup truck. Same as me. And allegedly the same as the murderers? So, do you know any of the victims of the murders? Not personally, no. Then why did you kill them? I, uh, I didn't. I have no idea why it took three minutes and 22 seconds for three cars to be sprayed with the death. And I definitely have no idea who drove a bike to the Creek Park on the corner of Horn and Elm. Well, for someone who's not a murderer, you seem to know a lot about the murders, Mr. Slayer. Uh, it's, uh, you know what? You're not going to get through to me. And unless you get a confession on me, Scammerton has this case in the palm of his hands. It's true. Even though you've started to come back in the end, I still got this thing in the bag. There has to be something here, anything. Give it up, Casey. You've lost. You... Not so fast! Mm. Mr. Slayer, how has your restaurant been doing? Uh, okay, I guess. It's seen better days. Why? Do you know the occupation of the three victims? Bree Cottage, food blogger. Pepper Jackson, food critic. Greta Feta, health inspector. True, you may not have known these people personally, but they could affect your business. Fine, I admit it. We had a few, a few negative reviews. 
Saying the restaurant was the cleanest, but the most sanitary. But the food was still good. Then you wouldn't mind if you try a sample of your food. What? Huh. I mean, if Bree Cottage, Pepper Jackson, and Greta Fetter were all wrong about your restaurant, you'd be okay with us trying some of your food. I can't. Why can't we? Why can't we try some? You don't know what you're asking. Where's the food slayer? I Give us the food! You want the food? You can't handle the food! What's wrong with the food? Why can't we have some? Everything got by the children! <gasps> Joseph, how could you? Just one bad review after another. Bree slamming me on her food blog, Pepper's in her was tasteless in the local newspaper, and Greta wanting to shut us down just because of the mold, flies, rats, and the fact that nothing was ever clean. I mean, I had to protect my business. I put my heart and soul into that thing. We were, uh, we were getting behind on rent, so I got a job as a bailiff to help cover costs. I, I couldn't let Sloppy Joe's go. I couldn't let my dreams die. Well, that's a very touching story, but you still committed murder, so... Joseph Slayer, I hereby sentence you to death. That's a little harsh! Fine, since we were once friends, life in prison without the possibility of parole. Court is adjourned. Let's go. Ah, <laughs> take him away. Seems it's true what they say about Canadians. So, does this mean I'm free? I'm free! I'm free! Yes! So, this means I am lost? I can't be. I, I never lost anything. I, I can't lose. Especially after Sumner doesn't even have a lawyer. It's terrible. How am I going to save my shattered law practice? This is the second worst thing to ever happen to me. Right after when father wouldn't let me go to art school. <laughs> Why don't you just go to art school? What? Yeah, you're a grown man. You can make your own decisions. Those drawings that you showed were, uh, great. <laughs> they were great, weren't they? You know what? You're right. I am going to go to art school. And no one's going to stop me this time. Not even you, Dad! <laughs> I'm going to go buy a new box of crayons right now! <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry, that was one crazy ride. I was just traveling on my way, and suddenly all of this happened. There wasn't a whole lot of order in this court, but it all worked out in the end. All this court stuff has made me famish. Do you know any good local restaurants to visit? I just know one place I wouldn't want to eat at. <laughs>